there's so much trash out there that it's almost like, yeah, in order for me to be an entrepreneur, I have to be a risk taker, right? And that means as I'm taking risk, there's a cost of that. You're listening to the Profit by Design podcast, episode 37. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real-life entrepreneurs all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. So Sabrina, it's been a while since you and I have recorded a podcast together. We've had so many exciting guests on the podcast and, you know, there's been so many things happening in the Profit by Design community. It's been uh, explosive. We've been talking to so many awesome people. We've had some awesome feedback. Yeah, you know, like the feedback that goes on in the community and just people commenting different comments about the podcast, like the one that comes to mind most recently is Christine Era really enjoyed our conversation with John Bates. And when I compared his Slovakian audience experience with the stoic faces and what that feels like as a business owner to be in a team meeting, that really landed for Christine. <laughs> so yeah. she talked a lot of that. And then, you know, like Don Zerby left us a comment on Facebook that he can't wait to listen to one of our episodes. And he says, my phone says I have 67 podcasts to listen to. And I said, my comment back to him was, wow, that's a lot of learning. What other podcasts do you enjoy? And he said, well, just yours and Mike's. You guys do a lot of teaching. (laughs) So... (laughs) So that's Mike McCallowitz Entrepreneurship Elevated Podcast and ours. And so, you know, I feel totally honored. It just says to me that we're, the things that we're talking about, we're pulling these from our own experiences. And, you know, I'm constantly talking to business owners in my work when I'm coaching. You're out there in the day-to-day of this. And so I think it's just really easy for you and I, Mike, to know what is on our listeners' minds and what they want to hear about. And I actually... When we're bringing on guests to the podcast, I'm always thinking about who do I want to introduce this guest to in our community? And there's usually like three or four people that I think, oh, yeah, they need to know, like everyone needs to know John Bates and that sort of thing. So I want to take a moment here. We've had a lot of new people join the Profit by Design podcast community. So I want to do some shout outs and welcome them. So we have Ellen Humphrey Allen, Dr. Nancy Trimbley, Rob Bauer. Joe Ferrari, Kickstart Accounting, Gerard Orbond, Tony Isgrove, 850 Building Group, Kara McGeege, Project Construction, Janet Lynn Baker, Ryan Baker, Aaron Longmoon, Chris Carson, Carson Custom Homes, and Rana Enos. So welcome, everybody, and please say hello in the Facebook group and let us know what you want to hear about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, please... I was thinking about this last night, Sabrina, you know, please, if anybody has anything they want to talk about, just put it, you know, send us a message, send us an email, whatever, because, you know, it's our, our goal to just talk about things that are real and that are happening. You know, and that's what keeps this so exciting is that, you know, we're just talking to a lot of genuine people and it's just really awesome. So welcome everybody. Yeah. And I do have one very special shout out that I want to do. And I want to acknowledge Donna Lyons. She recently took a vacation test for her four-week vacation. I think she went away for 10 or 12 days to Europe and celebrated her birthday in Lucerne, Switzerland, and did not bring her laptop on vacation. (laughs) That's awesome. That is awesome. And her comment was that several of her friends had to do some work while they were there. And she was really enjoying that experience of being able to totally disconnect. So, and that kind of leads into what we're going to talk about today on the podcast. Mike, you've been having some thoughts about things, some different conversations we've had and some things we kind of want to unpack here. Yeah. So 
about a month and a half ago. So, you know, as everybody probably knows, you know, I've been in somewhat of a life transition, right? So, you know, being a sole entrepreneur, running businesses, to then joining a company as an employee while still maintaining a couple smaller businesses on the side. But, you know, about a month and a half ago, I was actually, you know, I took some time to, you know, I was just flipping around the television and there was some of the, uh, you know, college football combines were on for dress. And there wasn't anything super significant about it, but I was just watching it. You know, I watched it for maybe 30 minutes. And then the next day I was at work and one of the other guys was talking about it. And he was saying, oh, did you see so-and-so? And, you know, the uh, 50 yard dash. And, you know, we were talking about a couple other things and I actually remembered it. And to people who are listening, that probably seems insignificant. Like, who cares if you remembered it, uh, something that you watched on TV? But for me, it was a huge revelation that basically, you know, I never allowed myself the time and space to en enjoy anything or even be present to, you know, like watch something, but be present while I'm watching it. And what I mean by that is I never felt like I deserve to have fun because I had a business and, you know, why aren't you working? You know, there's so many things you need to do. There's so many tasks, there's this and there's that and the constant feeling of guilt, right? Carrying around all of that guilt for 25 plus years of do better. You're not good enough. You have to do more. You know, you shouldn't be here right now. And then when I started thinking about that, I'm like, you know, you know how many, you know, concerts I probably went to and, you know, shows on Broadway and dinners and family gatherings and sporting events for my children where I was there physically, but I wasn't there mentally. And I just, you know, I thought to myself, you know, number one, you're a complete idiot for not seeing that. And I think the transition from, you know, I think what happened in my mind was that I transitioned from feeling like I was a piece of crap, you know, <laughs> like not worthy of anything to, you know, some sort of feeling of worthiness. Wow. So this is big. It, as you were sharing that, I was reminded of a conversation I first had with my attorney when I went to open up my LLC. And he said to me that it's going to be wonderful at first to have your own business and then it's going to be the worst thing ever because you'll know when you're not working. And I didn't understand what he meant. I thought, because I was coming from having a full-time job, I thought I'm going to be in complete control of my schedule and I can make all my decisions. It'll be great. And so a couple of years later, he killed himself. Oh, no. And I have no idea what went on that led to that suicide for him, but it always stood out in my mind that what he said to me is about, you will always know when you're not working. I imagine he carried a lot of guilt and he did not, I heard high levels of responsibility in that statement and excessive self-criticism. And so I just imagine that there is some connection in there with that for him. And what you're sharing is something I think we all deal with as entrepreneurs. That, and you know, when we talked with Chad, that feeling of do we, are we worthy of enjoying ourselves? Are we worthy of being kind to ourselves? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm sitting here like I'm actually a little, you know, like almost like something just shook me, right? I'm up, it's a little bit shaken up because you know, just as you were, were saying the story about your attorney, you know, I think, you know, there's so much out there about, and actually I'll give you an exact example. So this morning in preparation for our talk today, I was just messing around Googling a couple things and I Googled the definition of entrepreneur. And the first one that came up, and I'm not sure, you know, where it came from, but it was just the first one in the Google search. It said the definition, person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so. And I'm thinking to myself, like, really? Like that really, you know, <laughs> that's, right? So like a lot of people that are thinking about having their own business or, you know, people that have had their business for a long time, 
you know, where th there's so much trash out there that it's almost like, yeah, in order for me to be an entrepreneur, I have to be a risk taker, right? And that means as I'm taking risk, there's a cost of that. And I'm going to do it at any cost. So my own mental well-being, my health, you know, my stress level, my eating habits, I'm going to drink too much or, you know, do this or do that. And I'm going to work seven days a week and I'm not going to be present for my family and my kids. And like all the things, you know, Chad was talking about yesterday, which is a podcast that will roll out before this one. You know, it doesn't need to be that way. And I think that's what I'm trying to search you know, search through right now. And like he was talking about yesterday, he still has the voices in his head, right? Or he still has those thoughts. And for me, you know, um, my definition of an entrepreneur is more, you know, somebody who strives for excellence, somebody who, you know, takes personal and self-development very, you know, is very like dear to them and they take it very seriously. They invest in themselves they want to be better human being. They want to be better to society. They want to help people. They want to, you know, like that's my why, right? Of why I always was an entrepreneur. And even though, you know, my primary goal right now is as an employee, I'm still an entrepreneur. I don't consider myself an employee. I'm a hunter. I hunt new business. I, you know, I really take everything that I do to heart. And it's just, you know, it'll, my transition allowed me to step back a couple steps and just realize the damage that I was doing to myself. And I think there's more information out there pushing entrepreneurs in a direction of can, like self-inflicted damage yes. than there is, you know, to not be that way. Well, and we high five each other for grinding it out. Just that's just one example. And so I wrote down on my notepad as you were talking, what is our definition of entrepreneur? And I want to put that out to our profit designers. I would love to hear for yourselves how you define being an entrepreneur because your definition, I love that. Mine is chief problem solver. I love solving a big problem in the world. And for me, what I'm really lit up about is changing the story of entrepreneurship, that it's not going to be at the toll of our lives that we are successful entrepreneurs. I really want there to be lots and lots of examples of entrepreneurs who have wonderful lives, very rich, fulfilling lives, and enjoy their work and are successful. You know, all the ands instead of the costs of the health and our families and the toll it takes on our relationships to be successful as entrepreneurs. Yep. So you're seeing things from a different perspective because you're stepping out a little bit. I want to hear more about what's been coming up for you. What have you been observing? Yeah. So, you know, to a lot of people, you know, like my wife has noticed it, you know, she's mentioned a couple things like, you know, you're much different. And if you ask her the question, am I working less? The answer is no. I like to work and, but I'm working in a different capacity. So I'm not doing it under a constant level of self-doubt and, you know, like Chad said yesterday, people pleasing, you know, I'm working. Fear. We tied it to fear that's underneath all that. Yeah, right. I mean, the fear of everything, right? The fear of failure, the fear of not pleasing everybody. So, you know, I'm still working a lot, but the shift has been my mind, right? I mean, the voices are still there, right? But I've chosen to... You know, I work at a very high level and I'm very, you know, my personal life is also at a very high level. So, you know, I am very present, you know, with my family. And when we're doing those things, I'm able to shut it off without feeling guilty. So, you know, a lot of the guilt has been removed, you know, and I think, you know, certainly for me, it's been, you know, several years of working on the vulnerability side, you know, like becoming vulnerable, but intentionally vulnerable, right? Just having a deeper understanding of, you know, it's okay to have certain feelings a certain way. I'm not going to beat myself up, you know, with a baseball bat every single day. I'm going to try to turn it into some kind of positive, you know, turn negative into positive. Well, and I wonder too, Mike, it sounds to me just from the different things you've told me about what you're doing on a regular basis in your new role, you're working from your strengths. 
like you mentioned, going to dinner with some clients and selling, you know, more projects just through the different connections that are developing. That's just kind of who you are. That's your natural thing. So that sounds to me like you're in your zone. And that's a very different kind of work than when you're doing a remodel and you have a carpenter who didn't do what they were supposed to do. And then you have to come in on a Saturday morning and clean up behind them. Right. Yeah, definitely true. And I think, you know, so exactly what you just said, right? For many years, and Chad was saying the same thing yesterday when we were talking about, you know, how he has to let his employees, he has to let go, right? And let them do their jobs. And that's the thing, when you're in the thick of it, right? Then you tend to deal with all those things. And yeah, I am in my zone. And my attitude right now is, you know, I've practiced enough and I just want to kill it, right? So I, I know what I'm good at. I don't feel, you know, guilty. I don't feel beat up. I don't feel you know, all these different ways. And I'm able to really excel. Now, the key is for everyone else out there that may be struggling with the same thing, how to make that switch. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a transition like I made. Right. So, you know, in a certain sense, I feel sorry. You know, it's like, I don't feel sorry for myself, but I feel sorry for myself. And I'm like, you know, are you that much of an idiot that, you couldn't snap out of this 10 years ago, right? And you couldn't realize, you know, it's not what I'm doing now that changed it. It's all of the growth that I've made personally that has allowed me to think about it differently. And, you know, I don't look at, you know, the, I just look at it as a point of growth. It doesn't matter if I'm working somewhere or if I'm running my own business full force. I should have connected those dots earlier. And, it's hard for me to even articulate because I don't know, you know, like I'm going through this now pretty deeply. So, you know, maybe you have some insight on, you know, how those dots are connecting or how those dots could be connected for some other people that are really in the thick of it. And they're just like pounding it out every day, but they're, you know, there's a void, right? There's just something that's missing that you can't, you know, you don't even know what it is, but you're still trying to find it. And I think before, I don't want to cut you off, but remember I told you that story where I was asked the question, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? So somebody asked me when I was part of a uh, professional roundtable group, the facilitator said to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, I had a successful business, so I didn't understand the question. And maybe her asking me that question, she, you know, Maybe it was an observation of something, and I don't even know if it really pertains to this. But when I think about that now, and it's something that's resonated with me for like six, seven years now, sitting in the back of my brain, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, I think the real aha or the real positivity in my life now is, you know, not having all of that that guilt. So what I want to be when I grow up is I want to be, you know, I want to be who I am now. I want to be focused, highly effective. I want to have clarity and I don't want to beat myself up anymore. Yeah. You want to just do who you are and be who you are and not feel guilty about it and not be beating yourself up over it. So that question that she asked you was a powerful question. It put you on a quest. Like you're still talking about that question (laughs) six or seven years later. That's how you and I connected because you were on that quest. You were looking for some help. and you shared that story with me very early on when we were working together. And, you know, I heard you say a should in there and the coach in me wants to say, no, Mike, don't say should. And, you know, where you said I should have done this sooner. Or I think, you know, we're all on our journey figuring this out. I'm in the thick of it right now with our business. It's grown considerably just since the retreat. It's been a huge growth spurt. And I'm so aware of the stress levels on all of our team members right now and myself. Like we're all plugging, you know, like I feel like we're the little boy with the finger in the dike and we're all running around plugging this hole, plugging that hole, plug, plug, plug. And, you know, I'm a profit first person and I'm watching the budget and I'm watching the numbers and I'm sitting there going, we can't afford to hire right now, but oh my gosh, we're going to lose it if we don't. 
And so just this week, I had this clarity. I'm in a, in my own mastermind group and we were making our quarterly commitments and everyone's making commitments around exercise and, but the other commitments are around projects that we're going to get done in our business. And I said, I'm not making any commitments about projects because I don't need that. That just creates too much stress in my life. My personal life will suffer. My well-being will suffer. If I commit to a project, I will skip my yoga. I will skip my exercise and my meditation to get that project done. (laughs) What I need to do is I'm committing to yoga three times a week instead of twice a week. I've been sitting at the twice a week mark now for nine months. I mean, come on now, 20 minutes twice a week. (laughs) Like, that's lame. I've got to step up the game here. (laughs) That's awesome. But the other thing is, is I made the commitment to reclaim my morning time because for the last three or four months, what's crept into my morning time is writing emails and promotions for launches and other projects. And I'm not having my space to read, to listen to audiobooks, to meditate, to journal. That stuff has been totally squeezed out of my life. And so for me to do that, to reclaim that time, I have to look at what support do I need? What roles do I need to hire for? So in the last week, I've hired, I'm bringing on two different people, very part-time in the business. The money is not there in the business to support this. And from a you know profit by design, you know, I think this is really what's different where we, I think we kind of put our little stake in the ground and say we're different this way. There's the money side of it, but we also have to take into account the lifestyle considerations. And I am no longer willing to, I will not let my life suffer at the expense of our business growth. Mm -hmm. Which is really powerful, you know, and just the fact that, you know, your business is, you know, getting, you know, I mean, it's growing, right? And you're going through a growth spurt. Yet you're putting your foot down and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to do yoga three times a week instead of two, you know, and on the surface, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there cringing right now saying, you know, I can't even make it into the gym or I can't even do yoga one day a week. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. And, you know, using Sabrina's story, you know, there's something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to pick up golf and, you know, I'm 46 years old. And I don't know how to play golf. So, you know, I want to get as good as I can get to not be a total fool, right? But, you know, I've had that self-doubt, right? Well, you haven't done it in this long. Why are you going to do it now? You don't have time. What business owner on the planet, right? And even though how much business is happening on the golf course, right? Right. But in my mind, I was thinking to myself, I don't have time for that, right? I can't spend two hours or three hours on a Saturday putting around some grass, right? I mean, I have work to do. I have all these things I need to do. And, you know, I work, you know, I work probably 50, 60 hours a week. I have a commute. You know, my daughter is heavily involved in traveling uh, our competition cheer. You know, I have two sons that are, you know, in ice hockey and football. One son's going to college soon. I have my wife, you know, we have, you know, busy schedules. We you know, things are always going on and I decided I'm going to fit it in, right? And I'm going to make it work. And I've been taking, you know, some, I signed up for a, you know, golf class. So I've been going for the last couple weekends on Saturday and Sunday. I've been getting home from work. And instead of, you know, feeling like, you know, I have to sit on the couch or I have to do certain things, I'll go outside, spend 15, 20 minutes, you know, hitting some practice balls around the yard. You know, it's my time, right? I mean, I deserve to do those things. And I think, you know, and I'm speaking for you right now, but we understand that everybody thinks you don't have time. You need to make the time for yourself. You just have to do it, right? Mm-hmm. You have to put the aside. You have to get it done because it's going to help you grow. Well, that's the way I feel about it. It absolutely does. And I'm just sitting here remembering when I used to play tennis, how much fun tennis was. And I do everything like to the nth degree. And that can be my own undoing. And I had to quit playing tennis because I had some repetitive strain injuries. <laughs> but, you know, and I have the same thing with knitting. I, I have some repetitive strain <laughs> injuries from too much knitting. <laughs> so 
but it's so enjoyable to be out there. And I'm just sitting here listening and thinking about you playing golf and how that puts you out there on the golf course on a beautiful sunny day for eight hours soaking in the sun. And at the same time, you're going to be having conversations and doing business and making connections and meeting people. That's your thing. That's your zone. Yeah, without me even knowing about it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it clicked together. So, I mean, it's, I'm excited about it. I really am. And it feels good. Yeah. I remember a client years ago who would tell me that he was starting to take off on his motorcycle and go riding in the mountains during the work week. And he was feeling guilty about it because his team was back there at work. But he would have the greatest insights and aha moments for his business while he was riding around on that motorcycle in the mountains. And I noticed for myself the other day when I was doing yoga, I had two big aha moments within 10 minutes. And I'm so aware that there are things that I'm doing for the business that I thoroughly enjoy. This podcast being one of them. I told you this morning, like my highlight of my Saturday is getting to record a podcast. And then I have a call with my best friend and two hours later. Those are fun things for me. And there's other fun things that I do in the business. When I, I took a sabbatical week a couple of weeks ago and I focused intensely on a part of my book project and I got to spend the whole week on that and just dive deep into it. No interruptions. I didn't have to get pulled off task to go deal with a billing issue or you know a scheduling issue or this or that. And that's really what I'm driving towards in the business for all of our team members is to be able to work from that place of what are we really good at? What do we really enjoy? And let's clear our decks of the things that really suck our energy. Yeah, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about, you know, two different things. So yesterday when we were talking to Chad, he had, you know, his list up, right, with his two columns. And we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of the negative side of it and then how to create a positive side of the column. And again, you know, as entrepreneurs, a lot of the things that we read or that we consume are very stereotypical, like work, 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 work. And when I was Googling this morning, another thing that I looked up, it was, I think it said, you know, 10 traits of entrepreneurs. And when you read through them from just a mindset of, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, I kick ass, I work every day, you know, nothing's going to stop me. You know, the, the list is discipline, confidence, open-minded, self-starter, competitive, creativity, determination, strong people skills, strong work ethic, and passion. So we've all heard those things. However, it's how you define it and maybe create your own list that I think is really the key to the success. And I started writing down just a couple of things. I didn't get a chance to do, you know, a full 10 or whatever. But the first thing that I put on my list was vulnerable, right? So, okay, I can be disciplined, right? But discipline means what? I'm going to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Nothing's going to stop me. I am work all the time. You know, I'm just, I'm a worker, right? But I would urge people to change that list and write the things down that really make you a successful person and a successful entrepreneur. So I'm vulnerable. I'm a self-improver, right? I want to be active and I want to be present, right? I want, and I just wrote family here because I'm not sure how to play it out. So this was just my quick little, you know, offshoot type of brainstorm as I'm going through that aha moment, which is, you know, we've, a lot of times we morph our feelings and our thoughts to fit the stereotypical mold of what an entrepreneur should be. I would urge people to, you know, of course, yeah, we have to be disciplined. We have to be, have confidence. We have to have these things, but it's not the 10 successful traits. I would argue that all day long. I would say, if I'm not taking time for myself, right, I'm not going to be successful. If I'm not vulnerable and I'm not able to talk to people about things, right? I mean, three years ago, I would have never thought to myself, I'm going to have a podcast and I'm actually going to open up and be truthfully honest with people and just spew my feelings for anybody who ever wants to listen is going to be able to listen to me. <laughs> yeah, Mike, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, talk about, I know three years ago, you would not have 
ever imagined. I wouldn't have imagined we'd be doing this. I'm not a self-revealer either. And here we are, we're telling the world our stuff. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, like I feel successful just talking about it because I hope that it's resonating with other people. And for me, it makes me feel good. Well, and that I think that's just it is the more we have shared and opened up on the podcast and like at the retreats, it's just so clear that the things that we struggle with, others are dealing with. And I think what's so helpful to me is when I do open up and I share about something and somebody else, you or someone else pipes in and and kind of shares their story and I can stop being in my story, I can hear your story. And as I'm listening to your story, that gives me enough distance from my own stuff to have a new aha moment. And it's very, it's like this self-fulfilling circle or self-perpetuating cycle of goodness that I see coming from these conversations. I'm really curious from you listening, what is your definition of entrepreneurship? Like those adjectives that you shared, Mike, those are some really cool adjectives. It pre- being present, you know, that was part of your definition and vulnerable. Those are not things when you Google entrepreneur, vulnerable does not show up in the list. <laughs> no, it, 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 it probably know, shows up on the list of traits not to have. Right. Like, yeah, we're not supposed to show that side of ourselves. And so I just, I want to put that out for our listeners to really engage with us in you know, share what your unique definition of entrepreneur is. And I really feel like our community is in many ways trailblazing because we're pulling in more and more people into the profit by design community and inviting more and more people into this conversation about, you know, entrepreneurship needs to support life. And how do we blend those two together? So, and I, I'm excited because I know in the coming weeks, we have some really fun conversations coming up with our special Mother's Day edition of the podcast. We're going to talk about being a mom and an entrepreneur. We have, you're going to interview me and we have another guest that we're bringing on one of our past guests who was very popular. We're bringing her back for another discussion on this topic. And then a few weeks after that, we have our Father's Day edition and I'm going to interview you. And we have another guest coming on who's going to join us. And we're going to talk with him about his experience with fatherhood. He's also been a past guest on the podcast and a popular guest that we've had. And so we're just taking all these different angles and really bringing in all these different perspectives. I feel excited about what we're doing with entrepreneurship here, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my kind of closing comment is, you know, for those of you that are listening that you know, are maybe nervous or afraid, you know, there's everything, you know, we don't always need to be stoic, right? And, you know, even if you experience like, you know, Sabrina's retreat and other things, if you don't walk into a situation like that with a complete open mind and vulnerability to be genuine and honest and get the feelings out, it doesn't work. And, Anybody who's gone to that retreat will tell you the growth that they have personally, you know, the leaps and bounds from a personal perspective. It has nothing to do with how I'm going to do my accounting or how I'm getting my next client, right? I mean, it's completely, you have to, it's breakthroughs on the bayou, right? I mean, you have to break through the conventional thought process and just be vulnerable and open up. And I will say that probably scares the bejeepers out of some of our folks who are listening. And, you know, I love when that bus pulls up in my driveway for the first day of the retreat and people start coming off the bus and Mike McCallowitz and Donna and I stand there and we hug everybody coming off the bus and the reactions to people who are brand new to us. You know, they're kind of like, who are these crazy people giving me a hug? (laughs) But I tell you what, by the second day, the hugs are flowing. We are really good at making it okay to be vulnerable. And that is not an experience that we get as entrepreneurs anywhere else 
and, and to be able to be in a room of other entrepreneurs and to be able to be vulnerable and be real and talk about the hard things. And then what also I think is so powerful is when we talk about the hard things that we think it was just something wrong with us, like we're just the crazy ones because we don't have other people in our lives to reflect these things back to. And when we start talking with other entrepreneurs, we realize we're not the crazy ones that most entrepreneurs go through these things. And the people in the room, some people are a little further along in the journey. Some people are 10 steps behind. Everyone has a story and a way to connect and relate that helps us further our own story. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, you gotta, everybody has to start somewhere and there's never, you know, when you're taking a step, you know, or starting the journey, you're just as important to the community as if you were, you know, you're in the journey two years, three years, five years, whatever it is. And one other quick shout out from me, and then I'll shut up. Now, I can't stop thinking about the conversation that we had with Chad yesterday. And, you know, when we talk about vulnerability, I mean, Chad's known me for quite some time. And I'm sure the first time he met me, like most people think, you know, this guy's the biggest a-hole on the planet. Because, you know, I'm not a very outward, you know, spoken, jovial type of guy. I mean, I tend to be the, you know, quiet, more stoic, reserved, you know, guy that's in the corner just observing everything. And, I, you know, I had to break through the barriers and become a lot more vulnerable for growth. And, you know, the shout out to Chad is, you know, I've seen him, you know, grow and work so hard on breaking through, you know, his head trash and, you know, the guilty feelings and everything else that, you know, he's going through. And it, he is, you know, one of my biggest inspirations. I mean, he is just a, an incredible guy. He never gives up. You know, he keeps improving himself and he's, you know, just breaking through so many things and getting to, you know, higher levels of, you know, just self-awareness, maturity, all those different things. So, you know, Chad, again, you know, yesterday, you know, the conversation was awesome. Thanks for sharing you know, you're a really great person. Yes. Yeah. He is so willing to be vulnerable and he wants to support others in their journey. And he recognizes like he's not done. And like Steve Bousquet shared on the episode when we had him on, there is no there. We're never done. (laughs) I got to throw this in here that there have been some guests we've reached out to, to come onto the podcast and we don't, they won't come on and they're a little, they're like, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready. You know, I'm still in the middle of this. And I want you to know if Mike and I reach out to you and tag you and say, hey, we want you on the show. It's because we see that you have something that you have worked through recently that would inspire or help someone else. And yeah. I think we're nice people, right, Mike? We don't make any, well, we've made people cry, but <laughs> you know, in a supportive, loving way. <laughs> you know, so please. When John Bates was with us at the retreat, he talked about being a TED coordinator and how he's struck by in the TED community, when you reach out to a man and you invite him to come do a TED talk, he'll say yes. You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah, awesome. I'll do it. You reach (laughs) out to a woman and invite her to do a TED talk. And the response is, I'm not ready. And that's a woman thing. Like we always feel like we're not quite there yet. And so I want to say this to men and women who are listening. When Mike and I reach out, we know you're ready and step up, step in, don't play small. We want you sharing your story here. So Mike, this has been a great conversation on a Saturday morning when we're recording this. So I've thoroughly enjoyed this and I can't wait to hear what our listeners have to say in response to these different things we've touched on today. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Bye. We're already planning Retreat 2020. Breakthroughs on the Bayou 2020 will be the four-week vacation legacy retreat. And it's just going to be another phenomenal experience of connections, getting vulnerable, and learning and growing together as we rewrite the story of entrepreneurship and show that work supports life, not the other way around. If you want to be a part of this experience, we still have openings for the 2020 retreat. You can find out more at fourweekvacation.com. Thank you for spending time with us today. 
Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is Real Life Business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.